New shooting tech means fresh hunting possibilities and mm -hmm. adventures. Tonight we're trailblazing in the Portuguese countryside. Our friend Sergio Couto wants to find out if he can offer his hunting clients the opportunity to stalk wild boar at night. It's never been done here before. Nobody does that. Some people may think they've done it, but they can shoot a boar on the way to their stand. It's not necessarily stalking, okay? We are actually physically looking for boar in the dark. He knows the pigs are here and in big numbers, but can he get hunters within shooting range of the wild boar? And secondly, will the infrared thermal units, which rely on contrasting heat signatures, pick them out well enough in the Portuguese summer heat? Step forward, Paul Donagani from Infere UK. Menu, we're going to go straight down into zero in. Although Paul didn't expect to be shooting, he's been told he is. Plus, he's to set up the rifles in the midday sun with no time to acclimatise. It's warm, Paul. It is very warm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely warm. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually bad. I think I've got burnt. We've only been outside the car for two and a half minutes. <laughs> Literally saw the smoke coming off your eyes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very warm. So here. we're cooking and we've decided to come out to Portugal and test thermal. Yeah. Is it going to work? Yes. I, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, everyone says that you can't use thermal when it's really hot, so we thought we'd come to, <laughs> we thought we'd come to Portugal where it's 40 degrees. <laughs> it's going to be challenging. Which it always is when I'm with you, actually, David. <laughs> every, every time I've come out, there's always a challenge. But that's what makes it fun, isn't it? I mean, that's the, that's the good thing about being out here with field sports. What we'll do is we'll get the uh, get the scope zeroed on the two rifles, and then we're going to get out tonight and, and see if we can get a ball. So that's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Confident. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> They've mounted the TH50 thermal scope on an unmoderated 270 and the TD50L night vision scope Andy Crow uses on bunnies on the little Bergara single shot takedown rifle. With rifles and scopes on song and Paul on the after sun, it's time for food, not us, the wildlife. The ground we'll be hunting on is 2,000 hectares of open countryside, no fences. The feeding regime costs a fortune, but it benefits all game. Tiago has a few uh, feed stations like that, all scattered around the ground. They are all automatic, so instead we, we have to come over here and put it physically all the time, making noise, is why you notice the boar are quite relaxed. Yeah. So the way is, he feeds that just maize, and the boar and the deer, they all feed from here, and everything else comes with it, the hares and everything. So that's at about 7.30, 8 o'clock, every day spins for 10 seconds. 10 seconds can, can throw out a lot of maize. Yeah. And what that makes is, instead of being in a pile, all the boar eat in one place and go, they have to scatter around and make them to stay here a little bit longer. Yeah. Tiago and Sergio are also trying to establish a wild partridge shoot here. The pig versus partridge food fight is a little unfair, so Tiago has invented his own boar unfriendly feeding station. These spikes is try to prevent the, the boar to come and steal from the, the feed because the boar can be a bit destructive. That's just for the wild partridge to be able to, to get feed, so that's the hopper, as you see. And and here is a 100% wild bird. There's no throwing population, there's no breeding. What we have here is totally wild. With the stage set, it's time for our food and some rustic Portuguese hospitality. Now, because the tech has moved faster than the law, Sergio has invited us at a particular time of the month. He still needs to abide by outdated Portuguese regulations, which state we can only shoot during the 10 nights leading up to the full moon. That's obviously sensible with good old glass, but now defunct with digital kit. Yeah. They go with a tractor neck to the road, I'll yeah. show you. And they'll plow it, yeah. just to leave like, so if someone throws a cigarette, they'll they'll catch fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. En route to feed more animals before dark, Sergio stops to look at the damage a recent wildfire has caused. Southern Europe has been hit hard this year, and in some areas, the countryside has been completely shut down to all, including hunters. The guys think this is ridiculous. Just like gamekeepers in the UK, they're the ones who spot an emergency before it becomes one. We used to have a minister before that was all about for the hunters to be in the countryside because if we are out, we are the first ones to see 
the signs of fire and we'll be the first one, the first responsers or the first phone call would be made by a hunter. Um, the latest one is not so happy about that um, for every many reasons. So yes, hunters had a big benefit to be in the wild for a prevention and that's very important. As we're here for wild boar, we'd better get to know our quarry. These boar are not wild and therefore not camera shy. The images through the infrared scope and the spotters are really good. Identifying a boar at our self-imposed maximum shooting range of about 100 metres won't be a problem. Slowly we edge down to a plateau where the wild boar have been feeding. At this point we stop and look down across where we were spreading maize earlier on. There are pigs along the tree line. Sergio stays put and will coordinate from the vantage point. Working the wind, Tiago guides Paul. There's a heat signature, but not enough. We think it's gone. Then it offers a shot. Paul takes it, but in the moment doesn't press record. David, using Paul's infrared FH35 spotter, reacts at the shot. As we came over the brow bit here, it was just standing out in front of us. And as we got onto it with the scope, it just stepped into the brush. We were waiting for it to come out and uh, give it a broadside shot. So I had record on, turn record off to wait for it to come out. And as it came out, because it only gave us a split second, forgot to press record. <laughs> Shot. <laughs> we haven't recorded it. But we're hoping it's going to be dead just over there. So we're just going to give it a minute or two for it all to settle. And then hopefully we can go over and, and find the ball. With everyone happy the shot was good, they head to the tree line to look for our ball. Even with all our chat, there are pigs moving through the cover just yards from us. Uh, it's like a proper piggy motorway, isn't it? <laughs> Every two seconds, there's a load of ball going through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's two pigs down. Uh, egg. Dead, yeah. It's a nice young boar, and once again, Paul got caught up in the moment. A snapshot taken with no record button pressed on the thermal unit. For more sensitive viewers, we can't repeat what David said at the time. They say that it doesn't work in the heat. We proved them wrong. One, two, three, go! It's Paul's first ever wild boar, Sergio's first successful Portuguese wild boar stalk, and a good test of kit that he hopes will offer hunters something completely different. Just managed to get an opportunity with a little V in the gap. It was about, I don't know, two foot, and as it came over, it stopped for a second. We managed to squeeze a shot off, so yeah. <laughs> really good. <laughs> yeah, it all happened really quickly, didn't it? Yeah. And that's the difference between stalking. It is, is yeah, yeah, for sure. So if you were if you were sitting on a on a on a high seat or on a well, on even a even stalking wise, you know, they're just totally different. I mean, we've been out what we we went out about ten, and yeah. I think we stalked pretty much. <laughs> yeah for the long start. Mm -hmm. We've come back with a couple of opportunities uh, uh, which sort of presented us. We went down, and the wind changed again, and back on it again and yeah, he did a fantastic job. The boy knows his stuff. We had a lot of javalis, we chose a 
um, uh, I was a guinea pig. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, we proved that it does work, and and certainly the infrared stuff worked perfectly. So, great. Well, thanks, thanks, guys. What a great evening! Tiago recovers Paul's first ball the following morning, just 20 metres from where we'd been chatting. If you'd like to be a trailblazer too and enjoy a four-night, three-day wild boar stalking and high-seat experience in Portugal with Sergio and Tiago, it costs £1,700 all-inclusive, plus flights. There are no limits on board, no trophy fees, and they will supply infrared scopes if you haven't got one. If you do want one, a tube TH50 is priced at around £4,000 and by heading to kitfinder.co.uk you can sniff out a fair deal from the UK gun shops with stock. To make life even easier, just scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description below for a preloaded search.